I think I'm on uh, TV. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, we want to get this next session started um, relatively soon, so I'm uh, mostly speaking to the people lingering in the outside. Hi, come on in. And um, we're going to talk about regional marketplaces um, to catalyze restoration finance um, in just a moment. And uh, welcome to everybody who's uh, watching us on Facebook Live. Um, it's good to see you all. Just need one. Okay. <coughs> Morning, everyone. Um, we're going to get started because we're already 10 minutes late. Um, and I thank you all for, for coming in. And if you're out in the back wondering if you should come join us, um, go ahead, be tentative, and then in a little bit, you can still trickle in. It's not a problem. Um, I uh, welcome you to the uh, Marketplaces for Catalyzing Restoration Finance in Africa session. Um, I'm going to be joined here uh, in just a moment by uh, wonderful colleagues from FAO, the uh, UNCCD's Global Mechanism, uh, and the NAPAD agency. Um, and uh, first, I want to introduce the session um, and then talk briefly about, um, uh, from my own perspective, um, about the African Landscapes Action Plan um, as it relates to catalyzing marketplaces for uh, restoration finance. Um, so I'm Lewis Wirtz uh, with Eco Agriculture Partners, and we're the Secretary of the Landscape for People, Food, and Nature Initiative, which um, helps to organize uh, something called the African Landscapes Action Plan back in 2014. Um, before I do that, actually, we respect the slides that Faustine put together. Um, so uh, the objectives of this event, we're specifically going to present a few examples of marketplaces and roundtables. I got right into that. Sorry for not waiting. Um, the African Landscapes Action Plan is one of those examples. Um, and then we're going to um, engage all of you to discuss challenges, lessons learned, and um, new opportunities, ways forward um, that we can develop uh, these ideas um, in Africa and beyond. So. Um, Okay, so here's the session uh, schedule. I mentioned my colleagues, Faustine um, from uh, FAO, Mamadou uh, Diakite uh, from NAPAD, Ludwig Liagre uh, from uh, the Global Mechanism, uh, and then uh, I'll be facilitating the discussion. Um, and I'm going to pass these back. Um, this, is, this is just a, uh, an overview of the African Landscapes Action Plan's uh, recent update. Um, and uh, that's what the document cover actually looks like. Um, in 2014, we had a, a meeting in uh, Nairobi in which um, uh, nearly um, 200 uh, African leaders in landscape uh, management uh, and um, colleagues from the international um, investor donor community got together um, and um, set uh, an agenda for um, 2014 to 2017. Um, 2018 to um, really take 
uh, landscape, sustainable land management, uh, sustainable landscape management to the next level in Africa. It included everything um, from uh, grouped into six categories, policy, multi-stakeholder partnerships, business, finance, capacity development, research. Um, and, uh, and then there were agenda items under each one. And we've um, done our best as the Landscapes for People, Food, and Nature initiative to shape our program of work, especially in Africa, around those agenda items. Um, and I think we've done a pretty good job um, in the three years intervening. Um, and one of those key things uh, relevant today um, is the finance pillar. Um, so in 20, earlier this year, in March, we gathered uh, another 140 African leaders um, in, um, in this field together to, to revisit the African Landscapes Action Plan. Um, and talk specifically about so what's been achieved so far, um, what did we forget to put on there um, in 2014, what was important that we left off, and um, what is, uh, looking at it now, do we want to re-rank these priorities? Are there so, uh, some things that are sort of emerging that need to be addressed? Uh, and one of those key things, as you can imagine, is finance. So we've got lots of good plans here, um, lots of good uh, agenda items, but what's keeping us from achieving many of them is that uh, we aren't sure how to finance them. Um, the, there's, a, there's a growing amount of money that people say is available for this stuff, but we haven't been able to drive it down to the action level yet. Um, and so uh, we have um, thought about uh, how to coordinate finance uh, at the landscape level, how to drive, how to connect um, peop, uh, practitioners with these international pools of finance. Um, and uh, this diagram here sort of writ large, uh, is a uh, demonstrate sort of how that happens. Um, but we call it the funnel diagram. Uh, you've got all these potential investors up here. And the idea is that um, regional marketplaces serve this sort of role here where they can um, be coordinating some uh, financial flows uh, and then passing them down to landscape level um, uh, intermediaries, local finance intermediaries, or landscape investment funds, or things like that. And then they get that money then is able to be to identify the like actual on the ground activities. So that's just, um, I've adapted that slightly because this, this works in a couple different contexts, but that's, that's what's pointed out there. Um, and then this gets into a little more detail about what that marketplace function, the bottom funnel there, um, actually does. So um, actually it's kind of both funnels in a way, depending on the scale you're looking at. So um, here we're talking about, uh, you know, it can, these, this can function at any scale, and we're talking reg about regional scales right now and down to the landscape, um, and you're, you're moving um, these t this type of uh, money, as it were, um, uh, connecting these, these groups in a marketplace. So marketplaces can take any, all kinds of different forms, and I think we'll talk about the different kinds of forms that they'll take, and Ludwig can point out some, ex some concrete examples of um, ways that they've happened with the global mechanism. Uh, Faustine will talk about an example that they, uh, of something that they ran in Uganda, um, Rwanda, sorry, um, in, uh, earlier this year uh, that we participated in. Um, and then I, I think in the group discussion, um, we'll, we'll be happy to hear from all of you if you have other examples. Um, and I also want to say that you know, a lot of these marketplaces increasingly um, need to be moved or uh, um, also online. So that uh, we are thinking about uh, diverse um, pathways to get finance to people and to connect them, to make those connections, um, whether they're um, tools that uh, you, you use at the landscape level to then generate deals that are sort of available to an international investor community um, through some sorts, through platforms. Those, those are also marketplaces that function that way. So um, now I think I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Faustine to talk specifically about that example that I mentioned. Thank you. So um, this morning we're going to present you our work in the context of Forest and Landscape Investment Forum. So this Forest and Landscape Investment Forum, or FLIF, uh, was organized uh, in Rwanda earlier this year in May. Um, and in fact, it, it stemmed out of this um, evidence that, well, everybody all the numbers, everybody's saying that, well, finance for uh, FLR is there, finance for restoration is there, there is finance. But when you look at how much money is actually invested into landscapes and where it is invested, then you see that, well, not so much is actually invested in Africa. So how can you support that? And then second, how can you support these investments to actually target restoration? 
So building on that, um, in, in uh, earlier last year, I mean, yeah, almost last year, um, we, we had great conversations with our uh, counterparts in Rwanda. Um, in Rwanda, you have to know that um, the, the government is extremely, extremely active and, and, um, and willing to be engaged uh, in this uh, restoration movement. And so um, the government has made huge pledge to restore 2 million hectares over the country, uh, knowing that it's a small country, it's like around 2.5 million hectares. So um, the government has really moved a, a, a very strong step forward uh, in terms of its engagement for restoration. And in addition to that, uh, Rwanda is really a country that is very keen in uh, becoming some sort of a, a, a regional or sub-regional platform uh, to convene and, and to serve as a, as a meeting point and a meeting space uh, for other uh, East and Eastern African countries. So taking those two uh, aspects together, uh, the idea of organizing a regional marketplace for restoration in Rwanda was just totally evident for everyone. And so um, the government of Rwanda trusted and trusted FAO and many other partners to organize that marketplace earlier this year. So the objective, the broad objective of that marketplace was really unleashing, um, unleashing business opportunities for sustainable landscapes. But what it entailed uh, in a more uh, precise way was that First of all, we wanted to uh, showcase that those opportunities were there and were existing because uh, this, what's missing is probably the, the knowledge of this existence of these successful cases. So first of all, showcasing those examples, those successes, then discuss the challenges and the, the opportunities that exist and how can the enabling conditions, how can the enabling environment be, be uh, modified or uh, to, to allow to enable those investments to take place. Then we wanted to create really a space, a marketplace for um, the, the project promoters and, and the potential investors to meet. And finally, and I think this is a more, um, uh, with, a, with a wider and a broader vision, uh, we wanted to uh, show and to, and to really remember people that investments in landscapes can really have multiple returns. Uh, it can be economic, it can be financial, it can be social, it can be environmental. So we wanted to really promote that wide range of, uh, of opportunities and returns. So... Um, who attended this event, uh, who participated, who talked, who shared experiences during that event. We had a very broad audience looking at both the side of the project developers, the project promoters, and the side of the investors. And so we had people ranging from cooperatives to banks, multi-development uh, banks, uh, international organizations, uh, private sector. We had many, many different uh, type of people uh, with, who gathered there together for those two days. And um, thanks to those discussions, after those two days of intense meetings, um, we think that we have achieved an increased awareness of all those participants, of those opportunities that exist. Um, some cr partnerships, some uh, connections were created thanks to those interactions during the big meetings, but also during and mostly uh, during side meetings. And also, um, there were a lot of discussion on how could the regional scale play a role in terms of uh, becoming an investment platform. And I think that those kind of ideas have also uh, fed uh, the, the work that uh, NEPAD is doing with the AFR and NRED, and we will hear, hear from uh, Mamadou after about that. So just to give credit to all of the ones who participated, I think that one of the big successes that we uh, had is that thanks to that event, we were able to really um, come together as multiple partners to co-organize something in which we all uh, could contribute and in which we all could see value. So um, in terms of coordination and support that development partners can provide at regional level for us, it was important to see that this type of uh, collaboration was possible to happen uh, on the ground. And so we were about 20 co-organizers for that event. 
Um, I would like to quote in particular, uh, so FAO, but also the global mechanism of the UNCCD, who was critical in, uh, in from the start to the very end. Um, and Ludwig uh, will, will uh, say more uh, in a while. Uh, we had UN Environment, the World Resources Institute, the GIZ, uh, IFAD, BTC. I mean, um, I, I won't quote them all. Um, and another interesting fact is that we managed to um, have uh, a, a very big numbers of countries represented. And about 10 countries from the East, Eastern Africa uh, region attended. So we had people coming from Malawi, uh, Kenya, Rwanda, Uganda, uh, Madagascar. Um, so it was a, a big event, 250 participants. And, um, and, uh, oops. and the topics that those participants discussed were really uh, reflecting the objectives that we had set for this meeting. So. Uh, looking at the challenges, opportunities, looking at who are these champions and who are these potential investors, uh, and also looking at how can we incubate uh, businesses, how can we really uh, uh, make this uh, finance actionable for a uh, restoration project. So um, this is how it happened, and uh, I would be very glad to discuss more in detail with uh, the, the ones amongst you who are interested. But um, I think that, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's maybe the beginning of a, of a longer story um, because this type of initiative and events can be uh, brought up uh, in a longer uh, time frame and period uh, through a regional initiatives such as the AFR 100, um, and uh, we will hear more uh, about that uh, from Mamadou right now. So thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Luis and Faustin, for this introduction. You may have seen that we were at this uh, forest investment uh, forum in uh, Rwanda to represent the AFR 100 uh, initiative. So AFR 100 stands for Africa Forest and Landscape uh, Restoration Initiative. The 100 uh, means that uh, we have uh, taken the very big ambition to restore 100 million of hectares of land uh, in Africa by 2030. It's really over ambitious when we know that uh, according to the, um, the studies, in the whole 20th century, only uh, 5 million hectares of land was considered restored in, in Africa. But when we talk about this, those 5 million, um, it's um, more of a natural uh, restoration. So moving from rest, natural restoration uh, to bringing this uh, restoration movement, this political will that Faustin mentioned in the case of uh, Rwanda, we can mention other countries like Niger, like Ethiopia, where uh, almost without um, external uh, aid, they managed to, to restore millions of hectares of land on their own resources using mainly human capital. And uh, we, we, we would like really to tap into uh, that potential. First, the, the national or country resources, uh, meaning human capital, to, to, to do this uh, restoration in, uh, in, in Africa. To date, we have uh, 25 countries, um, African countries, that have submitted quantified uh, commitments uh, to for uh, land land restoration on f and degraded forest in uh, Africa. The highest pledge um, is uh, from Ethiopia, with uh, um, 15 million of hectare pledge, and uh, the two latest countries we that joined were uh, South Africa, with 3 million hectares, and uh, Guinea. So uh, we see that there is. Um, there are many heads of states that are now convinced that um, there is no antagonism between addressing um, economic growth, fighting poverty, eradicating poverty, 
combating or uh, stopping this uh, forced migration from uh, of African young people, women, men, um, and addressing the the, de la the degraded land, turning it into economic value, fixed populations, and at the same time addressing the the main global challenges we have of climate change, land degradation, desertification, loss of biodiversity. So the, um, now the, the equation or the complexity is more how to uh, con convince more investors to, to come and consider degraded land as a potential economic value and uh, generate at the same time jobs social uh, benefit for the African countries, African communities at, at the same time having return on, on investment. And I think the, the linkages between the, the FLIF that Faustin mentioned, um, Louis uh, LPFN Eco Agriculture on this pool for um, landscape financing all goes on this uh, direction. And we are seeing this convergence there will be competition for resources. This is a human being thing for uh, wealth. But we see, I think, the, um, this convergence of going towards, um, especially for Africa. We, we saw that the other continents have taken off with the 25 by 25 initiatives and all this. But we want to come in the next... Um, the next uh, Global Landscape Forum, the next AFR 100 regional um, um, uh, conference uh, next year to say, for instance, that thanks to the FLIF and all the initiative, we have supported five, 10, 15 countries that have committed already. They have the political commitment to move to the next step to support them to do the in-depth uh, in -depth assessment of, um, of their uh, restoration opportunities with all what, is, uh, what it uh, entails. So this is an appeal to, to the, first to the, um, for a technical support to, to support those, uh, to help those countries to move from the political commitment to identify, do a more thorough, more comprehensive work in identifying their uh, priority areas in terms of, uh, of uh, restoration. So um, uh, I thank you for your attention and uh, I will be willing to discuss any questions or uh, comments you may have. Thank you very much. I'll just briefly introduce Ludwig Liagre of uh, the UNCCD's uh, Global Mechanism. And um, Ludwig, oh, yeah. your slides are uh, advancing and you can. Thank you. Thank you, Luis. Um, welcome, everyone. So I, I'd like to um, thank you. Yeah, I only have one slide. I would like to, to thank uh, LPFN, FAO, um, and NEPAD for convening this, uh, this event uh, on regional marketplaces. The regional level in uh, investment mobilization is really critical for several reasons. Of course, for the regional integration perspective, because you can combine uh, in single marketplaces several uh, possibilities for investments, investment uh, uh, cases, and you can mobilize different types of investors. So project developers from different countries uh, and investors from different countries with similar uh, uh, ecosystemic conditions, similar uh, geographical uh, situations can meet uh, and find uh, solutions for the challenges of uh, investment mobilization. So uh, I really like this, um, this whole orientation uh, that some of your organizations are taking. And this is showing us a way that is uh, very, very insightful. So now I just would like to present you or discuss with you a few features of successful uh, regional marketplaces or a few uh, conditions to have uh, successful marketplaces for FLR investments. Of course, this is not prescriptive at all, and this will be followed by a discussion where we can discuss this point, other aspects discussed already, 
and of course your ideas will be welcome. So the first aspect I think for these marketplaces is there should be a strong facilitation and coordination with uh, uh, expertise on financing and investment. So these capacities that the regional marketplace should have to, to mobilize investment, to understand the financing uh, sources, the different types of in investment uh, possibilities and modalities, this is very key. So this knowledge and know-how of how to mobilize financing resources, some organizations already have it. Uh, the FAO Forest Finance and FLRM team, the LPFN, we have out there also the Global Forest uh, Financing Facilitation Network of the UNFF. The global mechanism of the UNCCD is also promoting a diversity of expertise in terms of how to mobilize investment and financing for land-based projects. So these marketplaces should definitely have some partnerships with these organizations or uh, be able to build internal capacities on this. Second aspect, these marketplaces should promote a know your clients approach. Really understand carefully and uh, precisely what are the types of financing needs, what the project developers are looking for, what types of um, ecosystems need to be restored and what types of project developers are out there, smallholders, companies, SMEs, uh, farmers associations, etc. They all have different expectations and, and ways to leverage finance and, need, and financing needs. We need to understand this diversity and sometimes we need to be able to uh, put them into partnerships through outgrower schemes, for example, which marketplaces can facilitate. You need, you need, of course, to know also well your demand, your offer side, the investment side, huh? having this uh, knowledge of the diversity of financing types depending on the types of returns you're looking for. If it is more a financial, a social, or an environmental return, it, it may vary on the types of, of financing you will be looking for. So some um, uh, initiatives already are out there, like the FLIF that was presented for uh, uh, East Africa uh, in, in, that happened this year in Rwanda, uh, this type of matching investment forum are really critical to have the opportunity to meet physically, to organize physical meetings between project developers and the investors. And other institutions that can be at regional level or national level are really critical also to, to keep track of databases of investment opportunities and uh, investors and financing solutions. For example, the national development boards or the national investment authorities at country level are key to uh, facilitate this uh, data collection. In Rwanda, the Rwanda Development Board was very much involved in the FLIF. Uh, the Rwanda Development Board in Rwanda is following very carefully the agricultural sector, for example, but so far not so much the forestry and FLR sector. And through the FLIF, they have been able to gain understanding on how to uh, keep databases and, and, and collect information about project developers, business cases, business opportunities, and investors and financing sources. Another important feature is to really seize your regional level added value. Uh, so the regional level versus the uh, national level. You have a lot of benefits from the regional level that can uh, be uh, really justifying to work at the regional level for marketplaces. In particular, I was, as I was saying, the, the FDI promotion, foreign de development uh, investment promotion, foreign direct investment promotion, sorry, regional integration perspectives, but also a lot of South South cooperation possibilities. Um, there are already some funds like the Adaptation Fund who have funding windows to enable national implementing entities from different countries to cooperate, to exchange good practices and to be able to produce better pipelines of adaptation fund projects. The South South cooperation is also very much needed when talking about national level financing mechanisms. Like for example in Rwanda you've got a very nice national fund, the Fonerwa, that is also investing in the forestry sector. And in the country close by like uh, Uganda, there is also the, the necessity to uh, work further on a tree fund or a forest fund two countries could partner and the, the marketplace at regional level could help putting these countries together and improve so to share the good practices and um, finally the um, another feature is that to be really relevant and bringing a solution to the table these uh, marketplaces 
would have to catalyze some more project preparation funding. A lot of project developers have great ideas, but they don't have resources to put together the concept notes and mobilize the partners they need and, and conduct the feasibility studies in different aspects, gender, climate, um, business plan, etc. So this project preparation money is needed. And the regional marketplace could definitely be also a platform to help the project developers access and at least know which are the funding sources. Uh, the African Development Bank, I think, is a good example of offering different types of project preparation money, for, for example, through the uh, African Climate Change Fund uh, and through, for example, the African Fast Track Agricultural Fund, both managed by IFDB. Now, the UNCCD is also uh, putting together with the CBD and the UNFCCC a first concept for Rio Convention's project preparation facility that will help project developers to initiate uh, projects at the intersection between the three Rio Conventions, land, climate, and biodiversity. So this is in the making, and the, the regional marketplaces could really help uh, this type of initiative to take shape through routing this PPF into uh, practical country and, and regional situations. So without further any remarks, I, I, I'd like to, to point out at least to, based on the results of the, of the FLIF, huh, uh, of, of the investment forum in Kigali, we had a discussion on, on the investment platform that could follow up the FLIF on the longer term, and we were thinking the three main services that this platform or regional marketplace could offer on the long term would be to, to help developing the capacities and creating a learning network be, between all stakeholders, project developers, and investors, could be to, to provide regular matching and investment forums, so moments when all these stakeholders gather and meet together, and could also provide tailor-made advisory services for project design, in, including on the level of mobilizing project preparation money. So that were the three services that were, that were proposed, and I think uh, to make this happen, of course, a lot of more thinking and work is needed. That's why I'm very happy that you are all already working on that, and thank you very much for your attention. Thanks, Ludwig. That's excellent. Um, so uh, at this point, um, we want to open it up for comments, questions, um, feedback from the audience. Uh, and I'm, I'm just going to facilitate in the sense that I'll call on people. Um, and then we have another microphone here and we, um, so that we can all hear your voices. And um, we'll pass it back. Um, so is there, um, I guess uh, one of the first things um, just to, to ask as a, as a group is, um, if you have uh, experience with uh, a, a regional marketplace case um, that we haven't, that we didn't present, um, if you'd like to tell the group about it, um, and, and a key lesson um, that we may not have uh, brought up, or something that it, uh, Ludwig or one of us mentioned that it, uh, that your experience reiterated, um, and then if you have something else you'd like to offer, feel free. So, let's start there. Hi, thank you. Um, my name is Gerhard Mulder. I'm with IUCN Netherlands. I think this is an excellent presentation or series of presentations. Thank you so much. And I think you're hitting the nail on the head. This is exactly what we need. And then some of the work that I've been doing on landscape finance, and we'll be presenting some of that later today and also tomorrow, um, you know, we didn't mention it as much by name but this was crossing my mind all the time like where is the place where people where projects and money meet and what does it look like um, now coming from the multi-stakeholder platform thinking my question to you is how does it relate to the multi-stakeholder platforms where all the dialogues are taking place and the trade-offs are identified and the projects, etc. Because that was our starting point, the multi-stakeholder platform. But now you're talking about an, a marketplace or uh, an investment platform or a finance, a landscape finance coordinator or something like that. So, so, so where do the two meet? That is my question to any one of you who feels compelled. So... 
Um, I can start, and maybe uh, Mamadou and Ludwig will probably, and, and you as well, Luis, have many things to complement, I'm sure. But um, so we see that these um, dynamics are many and they are varied. And we have regional initiatives, we have sub regional initiatives, and we have many multi stakeholder platforms at all levels with many people, etc., etc. So I think that by um, using a terminology that is uh, investor, coordinator, etc., etc., we don't necessarily create another additional layer or another additional type of structure. We just anchor ourselves and anchor this type of work into the already existing initiatives that make the more sense to have this type of, uh, of activities going on. So. Um, and, uh, and uh, of course, uh, I'm talking here under the control of Mamadou and Ludwig, but the idea after uh, and during and after this Forest and Landscape Restoration Forum, uh, Investment Forum, was really to um, first uh, put ourselves under the overall umbrella of the AFR 100 initiative, and then to see how those outcomes, th those three main services that were mentioned by Ludwig at the end, how could they really uh, feed into the work that the AFR 100 initiative is having. So try to keep, try to build on uh, the existing networks, try to build on the existing structures and not adding up new layers, but maybe extract part of these and, and connect them with a broader and or a different type of audience, but try to align with what's already out there. Uh, I, I just like, yeah, so um, from, to specifically about like landscape um, level multi-stakeholder platforms, I think um, to fit them into this framework, it's important to think of them as a new, uh, a relatively new, or maybe not new, but a, a, a group that should be thinking about themselves as project developers in, in the way that Ludwig talked about project developers. So if we're building regional marketplaces and we're trying to match project developers with investors, that just it's just the projects that a, a multi-stakeholder landscape initiative are developing um, have a lot of, um, they're, poten they're potentially complex, although the, ch the challenge for them in terms of um, meeting investors and making uh, pitches for and, and creating deals is in simplifying or, or segmenting their, um, you know, and as we developed this, the landscape investment and finance tool, a big piece of that is, so as a stakeholder group, you have uh, an action plan for the landscape. It includes lots of vectors of potential finance. And um, now you, as a, as a group, rep whatever representatives you are, are going as a project developer with a lot of potential projects um, for, for finance that are going to require different types of funders. And the best thing that a regional marketplace can do is bring all of those potential different types of funders to a place where you can say, well, I've got a whole portfolio of things. Some of them are going to be uh, require people who are interested only in environmental returns. And some of them are going to require people who are interested only in financial returns, uh, traditional ag investor here, conservation finance investor there. And if we can get all of those people in the room, then we can really do landscape finance because all of that stuff is happening in places all the time simultaneously. So if we're just trying to, you know, it's, it's hard to send a multi-stakeholder landscape platform that has thought about this in an integrated way to one after another after another forum for the conservation finance forum and the ag investing forum and et cetera, et cetera. So the, the idea of the regional marketplace for landscape restoration is to bring all of those people to the same place so that people who, who do have a diversity um, of uh, potential projects to fund in these multi-stakeholder landscape partnerships can find them all in one place. So I think that's uh, a big key piece of what we're talking about here is, is not to have those segment, those siloed things anymore, or to make that opportunity available to people. Sure, yeah, so there's another, I mean, we're, we're just um, debuting something also that uh, Eco Agriculture Partners called 1000 Landscapes that, that is going to be, and I mentioned the online compo component of this, and a big piece of what we're working on is trying to use tools like the Landscape Investment and Finance Tool to gather data from multi-stakeholder partnerships and then um, really um, do uh, sort of structure of the matching feature in a, in a da in, in, with databases. So there's a lot of data that people are gathering about potential investments out there. And um, as we ag uh, if we can aggregate that and make it available as broadly as possible to people who are interested in landscape restoration, finance, regeneration, investing, um, we'll do a, a much better job of, of um, matching folks. 
I just want to add to what Louise said. Your question was, thank you so much for asking the question. Because I think, the, w w like you said, there are silos and there's just so, much, so many stakeholders, right? The idea is to have, like, it's a hybrid, like a tech, like a platform, which is B2B, that, that is able to marry all of this seamlessly, which is people with a project, like a project developer who has a problem to solve, and the stakeholders could be government, could be, you know, all the landscape stakeholders. And people who, you know, who, who, who the resources you need to solve that problem. So finance, and that's like, that's a whole thing, you know, by itself, which is what we're talking about. But that's just one component, because the other functions, finance, skill, competency, the whole piece. So this is all the people that are required to help the project, right, to help solve the problem. And here are the people who have a problem to solve. And how do you marry all of that seamlessly, as seamlessly as possible? Because this is a very high engagement. I mean, it's not like, well, I'm trying to, be, to make it simple, like an e-harmony kind of a thing for landscapes. But it should be that simple conceptually, you know, to be able to have that con. And yet, and, and, and be able to get like experts and people with like a lot of knowledge. I mean, there's so many stakeholders. But imagine having that platform, you know, and oh, which allows you that 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 leverage and you know just sitting in your in the comfort of wherever you are and then at least it it gets the initial dialogues going because there's only that much you can do attending conferences and and it's so much it's just, it's so deep and vast and also i think it's it'll hopefully help accelerate the space of uh, landscape work and all that we have to do because 2030 30 is like well 12 years away, so I think, so that's what Thousand Landscapes is trying to do, and we're, we're a startup, and eco-agriculture is a big part of it, and yeah, hoping, I'm so glad you asked that question, because it allowed me to say that, yeah, we are a bunch of people who are thinking about it, and there's David here, but I can't see him, but he's a founder based in uh, California, and yeah, Luis and eco-agriculture involved, so I'd love to talk to you guys about it, you know, separately, uh, put your brains on it. Uh, thank you. John Colmey's telling us to stop? Okay. Well, um, I'm going to override John for just a second and let Simon say something, and then we'll wrap up. Thanks very much. Simon Petley from WWF UK. Um, we've just started a, a partnership with WCS and BirdLife called Trillion Trees, and the aim of Trillion Trees will be to unlock large-scale funding for restoration, but avoided loss and protection as well. So I applaud this and really interested to talk some more about how we can involve and support this. Um, I came here expecting to hear a little bit more, I'm very happy with what I did here, but was interested to hear a little bit more about um, underlying marketplaces for sale of product, so, uh, which is a challenge for the business model and ultimately the investor. I wonder whether the platform would address that. Perhaps that's partially answered. Also, um, I didn't see on that list any potential private investors. I just saw impact investors. Maybe they're covered under that, uh, that banner as well. Thank you. Very quick answer to this. Yes, all, all this consideration of the private inv investors are also embedded in this uh, concept. And for the products in the fleet, for example, we had a lot of exponents, uh, companies, SMEs presenting their products there. So it was also part of the whole system to pro promote wood forest products and non-wood forest products. And, um, and the, a big piece of the Thousand Landscapes platform that she's talking about is, is arranging these offtake, uh, like potentially providing a marketplace to connect also offtake agreement um, stuff, which is, a, uh, as you say, a critical, critical piece of this puzzle. So um, with that, we do have to wrap up because I, I, we want to make sure that people have a chance to get to plenaries as they need and um, other, other sessions as, um, as you can. So thank you very, very much for attending. And um, we'll be back here. I think the next thing in the agenda is uh, 1230 for film. So if you um, have uh, lunch, you're not, you're not having a lunch meeting, you want to come and watch, uh, learn about an interesting GEF project in Tunisia, um, and then talk with uh, the folks who are behind it, um, ask questions. There'll be a video um, at lunchtime, and uh, I invite you back. Thanks, all. <laughs>